If you're ready to ditch your evil black rifle's grim visage in favor of a tactical paint job, stick around because today we're going to give you the lowdown on painting your AR-15. Spoiler alert, the secret is not giving a f What is up guys, my name is John with pewpewtactical.com, your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things that go bang. Painting your AR-15, or any other gun for that matter, is a great way to add a little bit of personal aesthetic flair to your build, and we promise that it is nowhere near as hard, complicated, or scary as the internet generally makes it out to be. Realistically, there are very little rights and wrongs here, but a great place to start is to give your rifle a very quick cleaning to ensure that the paint properly adheres to all of the gun's surfaces. We like to use a bit of brake cleaner to give the gun's external surfaces a wipe down to knock out any oils or dust that might have accumulated since your last thorough cleaning. Speaking of paint, there are plenty of options on the market, with Krylon's flat camo colors probably being the most popular. Krylon wears pretty easily and does look pretty cool if you like that battle-worn look, but it does stay sticky for a week or two after you finish painting. We'd recommend sanding down the cheek weld area unless you want paint flakes in your neck beard. We will, however, be using a selection of Model Master flat paints for this particular spray job, as there are a lot more color options that'll give you much finer control over your masterpiece's final outcome. You can peep the description down below for a link to all of the individual colors we use today. Obviously, you'll probably want to select a series of colors that reflect the natural environment you usually shoot within, if that's your thing. Or you can go full on hype beast and blast that bad boy supreme red, we really don't care. You can begin by using masking or painter's tape to block off any sensitive areas of the rifle that you don't want paint seeping into. Though rest assured that you should be good to go unless you fire that paint directly into the magwell or barrel. Again, to be clear, there aren't really any right or wrong ways to go about this, so let loose an experiment. I like to give the gun a good base coat with the darkest color in my lineup, making sure not to hover the nozzle in any one place for too long, as that'll cause the paint to build up and look pretty terrible. The key here is going to be quick swiping motions until the desired saturation level is achieved. From there, I usually integrate slanted striping motions with the lightest color in my palette. This gives the gun an initial very high contrast alternating pattern. And if you want the gun to blend in, you'll need to gradually chip away at that contrast to blend your colors in a bit more smoothly. I like to begin integrating some sort of stencil by layer 3 or 4. For this video, I've cut up a small mesh laundry bag to overlay on the rifle, giving us a fun snakeskin pattern. But again, feel free to experiment. You can also use local foliage or even handmade multicam style blotches if you're feeling crafty. Work slowly at introducing more colors onto the rifle while minimizing the level of contrast between them. Ideally, you want one color to fade fairly seamlessly into another. You can utilize your snakeskin pattern to create transition layers between colors as well, slowly building up layers with your lighter colors occupying more space at the surface. I like to splash a bit of that real gross Africa mustard color in there at the end, as it's a great approximation of dead vegetation when paired with the other various shades of tan beneath it. Your personal color palette is obviously going to be subjective, but I purposely painted this gun to reflect the general coloration of our local scrub brush arid mountains. Knowing when to stop is important too, and it's always okay to cool it whenever you, personally, are happy with the results. While my methods are not super concrete or straightforward, the important takeaway here is that it's totally okay to experiment and create something that you think looks cool, as you're not going to learn if you never try. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel as we've got lots more how-tos on the way. Once again, my name is John with PewPew Tactical, and we will see you next time.